Moving on to Night Court now, the television show you did there. You worked on it for three seasons, if I'm not mistaken, from my uh, IMDB uh, knowledge. <laughs> yeah, two seasons. <laughs> two yeah. seasons? Okay. Because was it season eight and nine? Yeah. Okay. Because I thought I saw somewhere on season seven you had writing credits for just like an, a single episode. I'm not sure. Mm, I don't think so, but whatever. So, All right, whatever. So season eight, you wrote a handful, and then you had producing credits on the rest. And then season nine well, was... I, first of all, what happened was, so after I had worked on virtually every late night sketch comedy show and every knockoff of Saturday Night Live, that existed, <laughs> I had run out of, of shows to work on. So I had to get into sitcoms. So that was a little bit of a career struggle, but I eventually made the shift and I got a couple of shows and that led me to Night Court. So in the early 90s, I got hired on Night Court. Uh, they hired me as the credit was ex executive story consultant. And I could go into a whole detailed diatribe about what TV credits mean. That's not important. <laughs> I was a staff writer. And uh, that whole first season, I was a staff writer. I wrote maybe two or three scripts that year. Okay. Uh, then I got uh, brought back and I was promoted to producer. And I wrote a few more scripts that season. And I think I wrote five night courts altogether. I still get residuals from that show. Lovely. Um, they're, they're not a lot, but they still come in. <laughs> Pays for coffee. Um, yeah, yeah. So was sitcom, you, was that a thing you didn't want to get into then? Or was it you just mainly wanted to stick to sketches? No, I always wanted to get into sitcoms. My particular path just took me through sketch comedy first. And then because I got so well known in sketch comedy, I got pigeonholed there. And agents were telling me they couldn't sell me into the half hour market. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just a, a frustrating thing that, you know, when I was done with SNL, I was ready to transition over to half hours, but those jobs weren't coming. So I kept taking sketch comedy jobs right. that were nice jobs and I was lucky to get them, but I really was, that wasn't my first choice. My first choice would have been to go on to right. a half hour. And that didn't happen until a few years later. How did you find that transition once you finally did make it? Was it an easy one to make or was there a yeah, lot of adjusting? Yeah, and I liked it a lot better. Yeah. Um, half hour writing for me is much easier than sketch writing because if if you want to write good sketch comedy, the quality of the premises has to be very high. We're not talking about hee haw or some you know mid level sketch comedy show that thinks it's funny, but it's not. If you're writing at SNL level or Friday's level or something like that, you have to come up with really good premises, and that is hard. Writing the actual sketch is not as hard as coming up with the premises. And so that that would literally drive you crazy because it's all you could think about. You were constantly searching for the next great premise. Right. Mm -hmm. Once I got into half hours, you were only responsible for coming up with a handful of stories a season. So you had more time to develop stories and try to come up with unique stories. Right. And then you'd write them for, you know, it'd take a couple of weeks to write a script. And then between scripts, you just did your staff work, which was working in the writer's room, helping rewrite other people's scripts. Mm -hmm. So the pressure, even though the hours were just as long, the pressure was much less intense. Mm -hmm. And I liked that better. Because the audience going into watching an episode of Saturday Night Live, expecting something new, fresh, they haven't seen. Whereas when they go to Night Court, they kind of know what they're getting into. Exactly. If they've already seen an episode or so. So the storyline's right. already there, whereas... SNL, right. they're just looking for something's going right. to knock and that, their socks off That's even off true today, even though I think that half-hour comedy has, is significantly more sophisticated than it was in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But people still tune in because they like the characters and they like the, the relative premise of the series. So they're not as aware of the individual story episode or episodic storytelling narrative, but the writers are. And, you know, you really put a tremendous amount of work into getting the story right. I think a lot of people who just are, are casual consumers of television don't realize how much work goes into crafting those stories. Even the people that are heavy into television don't realize it. They just watch it all the time, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Do you think that like now 30-minute television is more sophisticated because it's almost like a science it has been going on and being done for so long? Or is it because yes. the level of comedy or the um, components to it have been more refined rather than just it getting older? Well, it's both. both. It's both. It's because, because the time 
has has passed, like cars have gotten more sophisticated and planes have gotten more sophisticated, mm-hmm. and you know everything gets more sophisticated. Entertainment has gotten more sophisticated. If you go back and look at what was entertaining audiences in the 1920s and 30s, <laughs> you know it was like uh, a junior high school play com- compared to what people do now. Right. Mm-hmm. And by the way, in 20 years, what we're looking at now will seem less sophisticated mm-hmm. than what we're looking at then. Which seems hard to believe because you see some, like you watch some stand-up specials now and the, the jokes are just so clean and refined. Like the way they tie it all together. Um, some of these guys like the Chappelle's, the Kevin Hart's and these guys, even the Bill Burr's, like the way they make the joke come together at the end, it's just so clever. And they, yeah, um, and, and here's the other thing. Now, that's a great point that you just brought up. And by the way, I don't remember which of you, what your first names are. Otherwise, I wouldn't trust you by your name. <laughs> <laughs> You're just two guys on camera. To Come me. on, Kevin. We're <laughs> almost 40 minutes in now. <laughs> and get off my lawn. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad you brought up stand-up because the same applies there, too. When my brother was coming up, everything was observational comedy. And you mm-hmm, can get away mm-hmm. with a set in which you were talking about airline food and, you know, what it's like to own a pet or your, you know, your latest relationship. The story, the, the standup that people are doing now is so personal and so story driven that it's a much higher art form mm-hmm. than what standup was in the eighties and even the early nineties. Yeah. I think it's great. I've had some very interesting conversations with some of my other comedy friends about the Chappelle special. I thought it was terrific. Me I have too. a lot of friends in the business who thought it was lazy who thought it was in poor taste, who thought he was, quote unquote, punching down. I'm not even sure I know what that means. <laughs> but uh, did you guys see it? Because I just I, thought it was brilliant. I saw it. I thought it. I thought the way he talked about controversial topics was brilliant because I thought yeah. the way he tied it all together. And it was just, I thought it was very clever. I, I, I yeah. do know there's some articles out there that think otherwise, but I think they just... I've seen I've been seeing a lot of... I haven't, I haven't had the time to watch it yet, but I've just been seeing a lot of mixed reviews. I've yeah. been hearing a lot of people say it was better than his last one. I've heard people say they're both shit. I've heard, you know, like it's just all over the place. But from what you've said, I, I, mm-hmm. I've only heard that. I've heard good things. I thought it was great. Yeah. And me and Kevin both think it's great, so maybe that's... Yeah. And also, by the way, if you, if you forget about the content for a moment... The performance is really good. Yeah, That is a guy that is working an audience and working a stage as, I will say, as well as maybe Richard Pryor did it. And believe wow. me, that's a high compliment. Wow. Yeah, wow. You're talking about someone that is at the top of his yeah. game in terms of technique. Wow. Yeah. And just now, like you said, how it's so much more story driven now, stand up. And it should, it is. It's just the way it is now. And people that want to go up and start stand up and they have a five, they have five minutes to go on stage and give it their all. Well, that's, if you're trying to tell a story, that's one joke, really. Mm. Right. Right. So it's tough now. Whereas like in, back then you could probably speak of this better than I can, but back then it was like, you get like four or three, four jokes down in five minutes. Cause it's just qu- almost quicker observational right. jokes. Almost one liners. Yeah. Not oh, like, you not get, like, you but get, like, you know, you'd, you'd grab a fire room, right? Six laps in, in a minute back then. Yeah, if exactly. Really, if you were really tat 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 tat, you know, trying mm-hmm. to shot a uh, machine gun your audience, and no, you're right. Now it's a slow, it's a different uh, um, art form. It's slower. It's more personal. It's definitely more story driven and first person driven. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of people like Chappelle and Kevin Hart, and you know, we're not the name we're not supposed to say, Louis C.K. It's it's more issue driven or taking on topics that are considered taboo and that's what stand-up should be yeah it should yeah, of course. irreverent it should take on the man it should you know push people's buttons push yeah. boundaries so you know i cross lines you know, and i you know when i'm driving i have serious radio on and i'll occasionally listen to the stand-up channel and i'm just amazed at the, the quality of, of stand-up today compared to what we thought was real quality right back in the 80s 